Trapper is the oldest killer in Dead by Daylight. His first appearance can be traced back to the early prototype build of the game, where he looked more like a mock-up rather than an actual character. In the alpha build, he acquired his current look, which was heavily inspired by Jason Voorhees and Babyface Killer from The Hills Run Red. During that period, he was known as Chuckles, so if you ever wondered where Behavior got this name for some of his cosmetics, now you know. Trapper's official debut happened on the 31st of May 2016 with the start of the closed beta, where he was the only player killer. And I probably won't surprise you if I say that he was very mediocre back then. First of all, by default Trapper was limited to carrying only one trap, which really hurt him, because in order to set all traps where you wanted, you had to transport every single one of them individually. On top of that, the number of traps spawning in the environment was RNG dependent. It varied between 4 and 6, so it wasn't that uncommon to end up on a ginormous map with only 5 traps. Alright, now, uh... This is Shelter Woods, and this is probably the worst scenario so far, because we got one, two, three, and four over there. Four traps on the ground. Now, I brought trappers back, but like it doesn't really, it doesn't really count because we only have like four extra traps. Using traps felt like a. The trap setting animation was a lot slower. It consisted of three phases, bending over and placing the trap, pressing it down and slowly opening the jaws. And when I say slowly, I mean really slowly. Overall, setting one trap used to take about six seconds, which made it absolutely impossible to use traps mid-chase, because by the time you were done setting the trap, the survivor was already happily teabagging in the next loop. To make it worse after setting the trap, there was a slight risk that your own hitbox would immediately make it go off, so you had to be very careful and walk away from it as soon as you had a chance. And it wouldn't just deactivate, it would actually stun you and make you go through an insanely long animation of resetting the trap. When just a couple of days ago we were testing version 1.0.0, we managed to reproduce this thing only once or twice, so I'm assuming it was more of a random bug, and in most cases you could still safely walk over your traps. I'm just gonna put it, um, well, how about here? All right, now uh, let's check out the wiggle room. Well, I can, I can definitely walk over them. It's like not that bad, I guess. Well, maybe I shouldn't have done that, but hey, I, I thought it would be worse to be honest. But setting traps was only half of the problem. The other half was keeping them active. The thing is that before patch 5.0.0, the default color of traps was white. So no matter how hard you tried to hide them in the tall grass, they would still stick out like a sore thumb, which made them super easy to locate and disarm. And I'm not even talking about how the old small game allowed you to literally see the aura of all traps within six meters. I think I found one. There. <laughs> I can literally see it. Can I see it through the box? Yeah, I can even see it when it's disarmed. The dev's justification for this was that having to disarm traps was already challenging enough, and making them hard to find on top of that would be overkill. This also explains why originally disarming traps took one second longer than in a current patch, but honestly, that was a pretty shit trade-off, and soon the devs would admit it. However, until that time, trap remains had to put up with the fact that their traps were pretty much a joke. I'm not looking. Set the trap. Okay. All right, now, 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 move away so that I, uh, like, I don't see it. Bro, it's right there. Is it? Is it? Is it, is it the trap? Is it? <laughs> Look, I'm not even running like small game or anything, bro. That's 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 just ridiculous. What made it even worse was that originally Trapper couldn't reset traps right on the ground. So if you wanted to reactivate a disarmed trap first, the game would actually force you to pick it up, and then you would have to go through the full animation of setting the trap. Start to finish. It was painful and annoying, but still better than playing without traps at all, which FYI was also a pretty common scenario for the early versions of Trapper. Because back in the day, his traps could be sabotaged, and just like old hooks, they didn't respawn after some time. So with just a couple of toolboxes or saboteurs, survivors could literally deny Trapper his power and turn him into a simple dude with a machete for the rest of the game. And that wasn't even that hard to do, because in the release version of Dead by Daylight, sabotaging a trap used to take 8 seconds, which was only slightly longer than setting it. So your job right now is to sabotage this trap, well I'm gonna be trying to set my trap and we're gonna see who's gonna finish faster. Alright, on a count of 3, 1, 2, 3. All right. 
I'm done, and well, it's taking you a while. Well, it is longer, but like not so much longer, I'd say. Plus, the game didn't even require you to disarm traps before sabotaging them, so you could break an active trap without giving Trapper an early warning that you were actually messing with it. But okay, supposedly you were lucky enough to get someone in one of your traps. Ideally, in this case, the game should give you a fair chance to reach the trapped survivor while also not making it completely impossible for them to get out. But unfortunately, even this aspect of the old Trapper was broken, because at the release, his traps had a higher escape chance of 25% per attempt, while well, there was also no escape attempt limit, after which survivors could automatically free themselves, like for example it happens in the current version of DBD. In practice it meant that every time someone stepped into a trap it was basically like playing Russian roulette, because either the survivor would be able to escape almost instantly because of a pretty high escape chance, or the game would go nuts and make them go through like 20 escape attempts before succeeding. There was no in between. And go? Oh, it's taking forever, the stun animation. One. Two. Three. Four, smells like. Five. Six. Seven. Eight, I'm still struggling. Nine. Bro, am I letting go too early? What was it, ten, I think? You'll have enough still stuck, bro. 12, somebody pick me up. 13? Four, bro, is it ever? Okay, 13 attempts. As survivors were getting more and more experience, they started discovering new ways to counter Trapper's power. For example, it soon became clear that the hitbox of traps wasn't that big, and even if one of them was set in a narrow place between two objects, in some cases you could just hog a wall and run past it instead of wasting time disarming it. That especially hurt Trapper in loops, because his hitbox is much wider than that of a survivor, and if he attempted to follow them through the trap, assuming that it's not gonna trigger for them as well, he would most likely still get trapped. Okay, uh, cool. I think it looks like I can just, you know, run between these things. Can I? I can. C can you? Yeah, I thought so. The next trick survivors came up with was even more devastating. It turned out that while one survivor was disarming a trap, the other one could safely run over it without getting trapped. This tech was called trap buffering, and it was extremely useful when your friend was in a chase and you wanted to help them run through a trap doorway in the killer shack, or any other building for that matter. Basically, your job was to start disarming the trap when your teammate was about to step on it, and when they got on the other side, you needed to quickly let go before Trapper could do the same. This way you cut him off, and in order to continue the chase he would have to stop, pick up the trap and then pray that the survivors didn't go too far. Later when the devs added dead heart, it became very popular to use this perk to jump over the traps that couldn't be avoided otherwise, and since in its prime dead heart was pretty much on every other survivor, I can only imagine how many trap remains were left traumatized with this experience. Alright, now theoretically if I do everything correctly I should be able to like launch myself with dead heart, let's see how far that's gonna go, hit me. That's like half of the map, I swear. But let's be honest, all this was just one side of the coin, because while being pretty underwhelming at the release, Trapper still had a couple of aces up his sleeve, which could make him pretty nasty to deal with. To begin with, in the patch 1.0.0, traps didn't have the minimum distance between them, which means that you could set them so close together, survivors physically wouldn't be able to squeeze between them without stepping into one of them. Now imagine how strong this was in the basement, or any other place where there's not so much space for maneuvers. Can you get out of the circle without touching a trap and no disarming too? So just tr try to get out of the circle. Come on, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> oh my god, you naive survivor. What was even more messed up was that the devs gave the first version of the trapper the ability to trap the hatch. And I'm not saying trap the hatch as in put traps really close to it. I'm saying he could literally set traps on top of the hatch as if it was a patch of grass or soil. And I gotta say that even for a veteran player like myself, it sounds absolutely surreal. Where do I put the last trap? I think I'm gonna put it right here. And if I did everything correctly... We're gonna see the most beautiful sh show in Dead by Daylight. So, uh, you ready? Can you prog the gen? Well, 
<laughs> almost, almost. I almost placed all of them perfectly. And for some reason, some of them despawned. Earlier, I mentioned how the old trapper struggled to keep his traps hidden, but that was only when he wanted to place them on the flat surface. However, if the surface was even slightly curvy, there was a high chance that the trap would simply fall through the texture and become completely invisible for survivors. And that happened a lot, because the floor on most of the maps in the old DBD was super roughly designed. Okay, I'm ready to see this. Um, seems like alright so far. Or <laughs> maybe not. Is it active? I don't think so. Let me... Oh, okay. It is very much active. Of course, it ended up being just another bug, which would soon be patched along with other pretty useful exploits, such as, for example, the ability to pick up the traps through windows. But the worst part about the old trapper was that his traps didn't have any immunity period for survivors who just regained control over their character after being immobilized. Trappers like to exploit this feature in order to quickly farm the deviousness points by picking up dying survivors and letting them wiggle off right into active traps multiple times. It was super annoying, because basically as a survivor you were kept hostage and there was nothing you could do to make it stop. Another way you could use this mechanic was to counter any potential hook rescues or self unhooks. In the first case you could use a wonderful tech that allowed you to place traps right below the survivor on the hook, and when their teammate wanted to save them they would be absolutely forced to disarm the trap first, because otherwise the guy on the hook would go straight into it. In case with self unhooks you needed to place a trap in front of the survivor on the hook exactly where they would land if they 4%ed. And yeah, this would automatically catch them before they could even move left or right in order to avoid the trap. Just like all other original killers at the start, Trapper had a reduced set of add-ons. Half of them had completely different properties, because they used to affect the mechanics that have been either significantly changed or removed altogether. For example, since hemorrhage in the early versions of Dead by Daily didn't regress the incomplete healing action, serrated jaws simply made survivors bleed more frequently. All add-ons that now increase the disarm, rescue and escape time used to be related to sabotaging or trap escape difficulty. Among these add-ons are secondary coil, four coil spring kit, wax brick and fastening tools. On top of that, originally there were three unique add-ons that were completely removed after the trapper's add-on pass update. This includes the strong coil spring, which slightly increases the escape difficulty, rescue time and setting time, setting tools which considerably decreases the setting time and logwood die, which moderately darkens the traps. The remaining add-ons haven't seen practically any changes to this very day. The updates with fixes for Trapper started coming out almost right after the official release of the game. The first thing the devs did was remove the ability to place traps too close or even on top of each other. This was achieved by increasing the minimum distance between them to 0.6 meter. I guess it was supposed to solve the problem of impassable trap clusters, but really the 0.6 gap is so small, I as a survivor still feel the need to clench my butt cheeks every time I go versus Trapper in this version. Just two months later, they introduced a short immunity period after wiggling off. This was what finally put an end to all the farm happy trappers who wouldn't put the last survivor out of their misery until they maxed out their trap catch points. Along with this, trapper's add-on set was expanded with six new items, namely trap setters, rusted jaws, oily coil, stitched bag, bloody coil and diamond stone. The most interesting thing here was that the diamond stone, being an iridescent add-on, was supposed to be the strongest one, and that's why it borrowed its properties from the original honing stone, inflicting the dying state upon escaping the trap. The honing stone itself had only a 50% chance of inflicting the dying state, effectively making it a gamble. Later this year, traps received another nerf, which further increased the minimum distance between them to 1.5 meters. That basically made sure that if trappers set several traps in one spot, there was a guaranteed gap between them, so that you didn't have to worry that you're gonna accidentally get trapped if you wanted to go between them. 2017 introduced even more traps trapper fixes. Patch 1.4.0 removed the ability to place traps on top of the hatch and made survivors temporarily immune to traps after self-unhooking, so that they at least had a chance to Kobe. In the patch 1.5.0, the devs significantly nerfed trapper's camping potential by taking away his ability to set traps right below the hook. What's interesting is that during this period, behavior started gradually changing their attitude to disarming traps. They no longer thought that the time survivors waste on disarming should be the main value of traps. Instead, they 
wanted to balance them around having to look for them. As the first step to achieve this, in the spring of 2017, they decreased the disarm time from 5 to 3 seconds. And just so you understand, setting a trap after this update took almost twice longer than disarming it. So basically I want you to do pretty much the same thing that we did in the previous patch, but this time you're gonna start setting the trap and I'm gonna start disarming the trap. And if I understand correctly, it should be like lightning fast. On the count of three. One, two, three. And I'm done. And you're not. Oh my god, what did they do? But what exactly did the devs do to help Trapper hide his traps better? Well, the answer is nothing. They just nerfed his already weak traps. Basically, throughout 2016 and 2017, Trapper received only two buffs. The first one made sabotaging take 16 seconds instead of 8, which might seem like a lot, but it didn't discourage survivors from breaking traps even by a little, because they still didn't respawn in this patch, and spending 16 seconds per trap was still all ultimately worth it. The second buff was a slightly increased trap setting speed, which... Dude, I don't even know if I can spot the difference. By 2018, it became clear that Trapper was getting rapidly outdated. He simply couldn't keep up with the newer killers, because most of the changes he had gone through by that time addressed various bugs and exploits, instead of doing something about his frankly underwhelming base kit. The situation started changing only in the summer of 2018. Patch 2.1.0 made the trap setting animation even faster, and also slightly increased the disarm time. I guess Behavior finally realized that maybe Maybe it wasn't that great of an idea to make trappers spend more time setting traps than survivors disarming them. As a quality of life update, Behavior also made it so that his two die add-ons could now stack and thus make his traps literally pitch black, and that went very well with their new make traps hard to find agenda. But most importantly, since this patch, traps could no longer be broken permanently and would now respawn after 3 minutes. Rise. Rise. I'm talking to you. There you go. There you go. That's how they respawn. Like, I've, I've actually never seen the trap respawn animation before. Another buff came out on the patch 2.2.0. It increased the disarm time even more, making it 4 seconds long, just like what we have in the latest patch so far, which is 7.0.2. Also in 2.2.0, the devs reintroduced the trap buffering, which prior to that was disabled for a short period of time. I specifically remember how a lot of survivors started cheering when the devs announced that this feature is not going away, and instead, now it's gonna be a officially a part of the Trapper's base kit. The next three years of the Trapper's lifespan can be described as a stagnation period, though to be fair, a couple of things that happened to him during this time gave Trapper mains hope that maybe Behavior didn't completely give up on the killer yet. To make sure Trapper doesn't get caught by his own traps when the setting animation finishes playing, Patch 3.4.2 added the so-called Grace period after setting a trap. Patch 3.6.0 Traps can no longer be sabotaged at all, and also can be set and reset without picking them up first. Patch 4.5.0 reworked the trap escape mechanic, reducing the escape chance to 16.67. Not sure why they had to be so specific with this number. Also, it capped the escape attempts at 6, after which survivors will automatically escape. This gave Trapper a little more time to reach a trapped survivor, while also making sure there's no situations where survivors have to make 3 million attempts before actually escaping the trap. In the patch 5.0.0, there was a minor cosmetic update for Trapper which, however, had a pretty significant impact on his gameplay. On top of increasing the level of detail on several of his skins, Behavior finally made his traps look darker, which as a matter of fact made them way harder to detect, even without the die add-ons, especially on his native maps. Almost half a year later, Trapper received his final set of buffs, which allowed him to carry two traps by default and change the number of traps spawning on the ground to a fixed six instead of random four to six. On top of that, several of his add-ons had been re because they were designed with obsolete mechanics in mind, such as, for example, trap sabotaging. Others were completely decommissioned as redundant, like, for example, Logwood Die, which was now basically in the Trapper's base kit. And after this, the devs simply forgot about Trapper. So far, it's been almost two years since they last altered their mascot killer in any way. And I kind of feel bad for this guy, because while some other killers are getting so much love from the devs, Trapper is stuck on the bottom of the tier list along with the pig.